actually, um, the behavior of the imagery can be very large. That can be uh, the type of behavior you have when you're driving a plane, actually. But um, the, in order to be more particular and pointing in the cybersecurity, the way that we are using it. Hello, everyone. Have you ever used artificial intelligence to improve user authentication? Today, Jonathan Gagné, CEO and founder of Faith AI, we explain everything to us. We're going to discuss about data privacy, regulations, how behavioral biometrics can enhance and make our life better. And guys, if you like this content, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. Let's go. Jonathan, Thank you very much for joining me today in this, in this conversation to the channel. And before I start posing a lot of questions, do, do you mind introducing yourself? Thank you very much uh, for having me today, first of all. Uh, it's an honor to meet you. Um, just a short introduction. I'm actually a CEO of Fake. It's an AI and cybersecurity company. Uh, we are established in Canada. Uh, I, I create uh, an alternative, we, we create alternative solution uh, for com company that are fully compliant with any kind of uh, e-privacy regulation. Uh, today, a little bit about my story. Uh, first of all, I'm a member of uh, Open Source Initiative, Electronic Frontier Foundation and Linux Foundation, which mm -hmm. is, I like to be a part of the community that actually supporting each other. As well, I worked uh, 15 years in the uh, as web developer and network manager when I was young. Then I moved in the West Canadian in order to learn object-oriented software development. I moved as a CEO, as a web, uh, web developer supervisor at first, then I, I get the CEO title. Um, I was working in the e-commerce industry where we are using um, fraud mitigation system that was uh, using browser fingerprinting and the persistent cookie. Uh, then I've been promoted into an AI inserted company. This is where I, I see the, the full potential of the AI machine learning and that the combination that we can use with the, the cybersecurity. So from there, I just quit everything. I move in Mexico. I develop my proof of concept. I receive a call from IBM. They tell me, move in Toronto. We're going to have a partnership with you. So from there, I move in Toronto. So, and we partner with Amazon, Duo, Multiple, or other global partner. And before that, I realized that I became an entrepreneur. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's an amazing story. And but going going a little bit deeper, uh, Jonathan, I uh, I know Faith, of course, but and I know that you are pretty much focused on behavioral biometrics. For those who don't know what it is, do you mind? Just going very to the basic, explain what behavior biometric is. Actually, um, the behavior of the imagery can be very large. That can be uh, the type of behavior you have when you're driving a plane, actually. But um, the, in order to be more particular and pointing in the cybersecurity, the way that we are using it, is more the way that you are actually using your mouse, your keyboard, your touch screen. It's pretty much a, a kind of fingerprinting uh, uh, that you have constantly. And from there, we can recognize a person if this is actually him or not based on that behavior of imagery. Perfect. So if my understanding is correct, uh, you, instead of using physiological biometrics, you are moving towards behavior biometrics, correct? To provide authentication to the users. Yeah. In, 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 uh, in, in some moments, I'm, yeah. we're gonna, I'm going to ask how secure do you think it is? But before that, so, uh, we know that with uh, all these data privacy laws, right, all the regulations that is coming, we need to protect our data and customer data, employees' data, and everything. And uh, it's very common now to use two-factor authentication and sometimes a third-factor authentication. So you have you have something you you know your password, something you have you can have like a token, a uh, all the other methods. But the third one is something you are. And it's pretty common in the past to use like facial recognition, the palm of your hand. But now, and in this semi category, you are using behavioral biometrics, correct? But my 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 question is, uh, if you are implementing a system with two-factor authentication, first one being the password, the second one being the behavioral biometrics, uh, of course, your algorithm and 
any other AI algorithm that deals with behavior biometrics needs some time to learn and to adapt themselves to the users. Uh, what is this, uh, this, this time span between the implementation of the algorithm and to reach the certain point that, okay, uh, the algorithm has learned about our users. So we are confident now that we are implementing a two-factor two authentication. This period, uh, Jonathan, do you think it's a, 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 a huge problem for our organization to spend some time teaching the algorithm? What is the approach that you are using? That's a great question, actually. Um, just to, to summarize, it's always based on the number of data sets that we got. Uh, more data sets you got, more you can treat a model that is robust and can uh, uh, be adapted to any kind of situation. More flexible, I would say. So okay. at this point, uh, at first, when we make our, our first implementation, it takes about a month in order to realize what is the difference pattern on that platform. But as soon as the, the training has been done, 30 seconds after a new uh, a member just register a new account, from there, after 30 seconds of interaction, when he's moving the mouse or typing on the keyboard, we okay. can reach a, an accuracy of 99% who will recognize that same person. But now, based on the, the, the new technology that we have, with uh, all the data set that we have been able to combine, right away when we implement the system, it's take about one day, and the day after, every new member will take about maximum 30 seconds to, be, uh, to have a strong behavior geometry. Oh, that, uh, that's perfect. So make makes super sense. So before, of course, implementing anything, you do have the, actually, before going live, we do you do have the implementation period where you spend to train in the algorithm and make sure, okay, on the day one, everyone, we have the two-factor authentication secure enough to be used. That's right. Uh, that ma makes super sense. But uh, going even deeper, Jonathan, because I'm very interested in this, in this subject, as you probably <laughs> realized till now. Uh, uh, a lot of laws, GDPR, PIPEDA has been now updated, not officially, but there is a bill to update PIPEDA. Um, we do have the, the, the Australian laws, Brazil, India, China come with a new one, uh, and everything related to how to protect the, the data. Uh, do you consider behavior biometrics as a PI, as PII or not? Different from recognition or facial recognition or fingerprints. So now we're dancing in a total gray zone where the people have our time to understand what is PII and not, not PII. So this is just to let you know a little bit the base of uh, that creation. Like I said, I was working into the fingerprinting and, and, and of the device in the browser. So at this point, everything is now PII and is considering as a tracker. So uh, even not only the privacy regulation attack those kind of uh, uh, solution, but actually uh, there's as well the browser who's creating uh, the browser tracker block. Mm -hmm. So more and more the people will have our time to use, uh, um, I would say PII solution because they are blocked either by the browser they are easily uh, avoidable by a decentralized, decentralized network. So that's why I created that solution that is actually just using meaningless information. That could be actually you, or that could be you and your wife who's using the same account that have actually uh, uh, access to this account. So that behavior biometric is not necessarily attached to an identity, but more about a, 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 an account itself. So this mm -hmm. is not a PII. And we try to avoid any kind of personal information. So we just realized right now when there's a data breach, the most the most information you put into the database, uh, I would say harder is the the, the, the the reconciliation of that problem. So yeah. in order to avoid to put example uh, a credit card number which worth one dollar on the black market or a phone number mm -hmm. for people using in order to make a second step, a two-step verification, which now is worth twenty-five dollar on the black market. We just try to put meaningless information about what is your mouse coordinate, what you're typing, and not even the key that you're typing, but the, the interval that you're typing. Like this, even someone tried to bridge the database or just reverse engineer the information, it will never reveal who is the identity, what is doing, what is the actual habit. So this is totally not the PII, and this is the reason why I create that solution. I want to bring an alternative that is fully 100% compliant with any kind of accuracy regulation. That's perfect. And you, of course, you can correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan, but 
even capture it, uh, how the person is typing, the speed of the typing, right? Uh, how they, 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 they navigate with the mouse. Actually, the, the algorithm creates a statistical model and this is the statistical model is stored in the database. So if there's any breach, someone can, can, can get access to this model, cannot do anything, correct? So there is, n there is no right. way to track back to, okay, this person is the responsible for this model. So there's no way to identify a person. That's why uh, I don't right. think we need to consider behavior biometric as a PII. Means that uh, my perspective and I, I would love to hear yours is biomet the behavioral biometric is way more secure than the physiological one. Do you agree with that? No, that is because it's like a password. You can reset the password, so you can reset your behavior biometric, or you can even you can change your behavior biometric. But what you cannot do with the example of your fingerprinting, your eyes recognition, your face recognition, you cannot change your face, you cannot change your fingerprinting. So this is static versus dynamic that biometry. Perfect. Yeah. And in case, for example, if I use a face recognition, we know that some we we had some attacks in the past using someone's face to impersonate other, uh, another person, of course. With the behavioral one, it's so much more difficult to do so, correct? Totally, totally. And as well, uh, even if someone tries to duplicate the perfect behavior metric of someone, uh, we can see it's a black box at times because humans have never the perfect geometry twice in, uh, twice in, in, in his life. So at this point, there is multiple ways that we can see kind of data manipulation that it provides another extra layer of security. That's amazing. I was reading an article about this about four or three to four weeks ago. I wish I could remember the, the, the source of this article. I, I, I'm so sorry I cannot remember that because I would like to share with the subscribers about this article. But this person was saying that actually they con he, it was a, a guy who wrote this article and he considered uh, the behavioral biometrics more invasive than the physiological uh, uh, biometrics. I 100% I, I, I disagree with this person and I even wrote a comment on the, on the article. I'll try to search a little bit and I'm going to send to you, Jonathan, because uh, for, for this person to get behavior is way worse than get someone's face or someone's fingerprint. I, I personally don't agree with this approach, with this statement of, of him, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts on that, Jonathan. That's going to be a pleasure. Um, I, I'm not agreeing with that as well because uh, actually you cannot understand who is the person based on how he's moving. You can understand if this is that person or not. This is really a big difference. So that's mean when I'm a, I will go on Facebook and I will move my mouse and typing my mouse or typing on my keyboard, they won't realize that I'm actually Jonathan Gani. But if I'm going to log in, as a Jonathan Gani, and based on my behavior, they're gonna understand if this is actually my behavior or not, because this is too much impossible based on the level of number of behavior biometry to organize one particular behavior biometry for me, but among all those, uh, the other ones. I would like to ask you, what is the difference between faith, right? The algorithm that and everything that you have built uh, as a company, of course, than the others. How faith is improving the user experience to this new, I'm going to call new approach, okay, to this new approach. What, why, what are you guys doing differently from the others? Uh, first of all, to enhance the use, user experience is to be transparent because often the company try to just simply um, uh, um, implement the two-factor two notification and the employee doesn't even use it. So at that point, it's hard to force to implement a two-step verification or an extra layer of security. So as faith act behind the sign, uh, the employee doesn't even know that he bears an extra layer of security. And when he's using it, actually he's providing an extra an, an extra protection that even if someone knows the same user and password, when he would use the same user and password, it would be blocked because the, the machine learning behind just analyze and make some prediction about is it the right behavior biometric or not. So for that part, it's great because there's no uh, training or extra step to do. And as well, uh, for the, the side of the, the uh, uh, 
the employer on his side is just protecting as well that this is a actual clients or employee example now there's a big trends in their remote working so a lot of people will put on a busted their password uh, a lot of people have actually some device in their own that uh, are not really protected example um their little uh, speaker that have wi-fi or mm -hmm. uh, that are not set up so a lot of uh, uh, breach happen where the, the the network or or the frustrated teenagers using the employee information access the corporate data and destroy or the uh, or use the data against the corporation. So we ask the the, the the user that he can just have uh, the search engine that only him would be able to use his account without any any extra uh, I would say like I say extra uh, asset. Mm -hmm. That makes makes super sense. Uh, now that that's very good to hear uh, that Jonathan, but. I do have one last question, if you don't mind, uh, and talk even broader. We know that AI is the future, from even from some very smart minds, as Elon Musk has already mentioned, that actually everyone needs to be cautious about AI and machine learning in the future. So because we can see so much potential, so many uses, and you just get your one use case, right? You are using artificial intelligence to, uh, to cybersecurity. So a very specific niche, a very specific topic, and you are implementing artificial intelligence. But my question to you, and I ask all the guests that I have is, for, for those who want to start on the AI world, or they want to do a shift on their career, what would be your recommendation to someone to start learning new skills, or even if it's a hard skill or a soft skill, what would be your recommendation as a mentor, as an advisor for someone who wants to follow this path? That's a great question. There's so much uh, uh, category in data science, AI, machine learning, deep learning. Uh, there's so much branch that they can uh, invest time on. Um, I, would, I would say, first of all, uh, is to be surrounded by that same community in order to taste a little bit every variant of the AI industry. In order to be sure that when you're gonna start learning in one particular branch, you will love it, and this is actually something that you would like to do forever, because this is a, a very particular niche where you have to focus on one particular, uh, uh, I would say, skills, because you cannot have every skill. Otherwise, you're gonna be able to do a little bit of everything. But right now, with AI, what we need is people who's gonna push the limit and make it for, uh, going further, because um, we are not. I would say we're the good guys who are actually using AI, but there's as well the bad guys who's using AI against us. We really have to get all the best and the, the, the best of the best on our side in order to win that battle because so far we are losing it. So this is this is how I'm saying it. Like we need those people, we need those developers or people who want to shift to AI, but we need them to be passionate and super strong in their branch. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very much for the, the, the discussion. That was great. I love it. And anytime that you need my help or any uh, any any time kind of event like this, I will always uh, be uh, available for you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jonathan. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have any suggestions or if you want to learn from a specific person, please write down the comment section below. I'll make it happen. And if you want to check everything that has happened before on this channel, check all the videos that we have there. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Thank you very much. See you next Wednesday.